All right, we've got a busy schedule today on this Friday. It's October 9th. Uh, the first thing we're going to do today, I think, is a very, very interesting conversation that we're going to have with Charlie Marin. And uh, Charlie is uh, part of, he's an owner of Vinnie's Bakery and Cafe. And what's really, really unusual about this bakery is that, first of all, it's located in Pasco. It's 1107 West Lewis Street. And if, um, if you haven't been under a rock lately, I'm pretty sure that you would know that this is the location where a man was shot and killed in February. So it, what is it like to have a business that is uh, right smack dab in the middle of something as big as this situation that really has gone viral? So Charlie, welcome to the show. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, good. So it's you and your dad, huh? And your dad is Vinny. Yes. All right. And when did you open this bakery? We opened last December on the 11th. December on the 11th? Right before Christmas. Yeah, right before Christmas. And then the shooting happened February 10th. You were barely getting going there, huh? Yeah. So we were barely getting on track when all, all this happened. Yeah. Why did you pick that location? Uh, we had a, uh, the owner of the building, a friend of ours, so uh, when it got up, uh, available, he called us up and, you know, uh, he, we've been trying to do this for a while and he knew, so he's all like, he offered us the building, so he took it there. Um, what was your plan? Um, is this a dream for you and your father? Yeah, it's been a dream for us. Uh, we, since I remember, my dad always wanted his own bakery. He's always been working in bakeries. And I grew up with that and uh, I, I kept the dream going. Uh, my grandparents were bakers, so this is a dream we, we want to keep on going. And uh, we like the city, so we're like, you know what, we're deciding to do it here. Oh, okay, all right. And um, was the victim in the shooting, a Antonio Zambrano Montes, was he a customer? Did you know him? Did he ever come in? He used to come in. Uh, he was just an in and out customer. He rarely just said anything, but uh, he went a couple times before all this happened. Yeah. Um, were you at the bakery when the shooting happened on February 10th? Actually, I was not. I was in L.A. for some family matters, and uh, I got to see a video on YouTube and uh, realized it was my bakery, so I called my dad up and asked him all the details. And you saw it while you were in L.A.? Yeah. Boy, if that is an indication of video going viral, you saw it your own your own business. Yeah, I remember before wow. the show we were kind of talking and you said, hey, there's Fiesta Foods, and then they started to pan over and you're like, um, that's my bakery. Yeah, I was just surprised. I called my dad instantly and I was just like, yeah, I just got in there too, and it was, like, it was a crazy, something uh, life-changing. Yeah, I bet it was. I bet it was. So I want to know what, is, what has happened to your business since the shooting? It's, it's been an interesting ride. Uh, the beginning was uh, was kind of dark. Uh, a lot of people were afraid of coming over. Cause they were watching all these videos on Ferguson, uh, how their uh, situation was going, and they were just riding in the streets. But the, uh, the people here in Pasco and in the Tri-Cities, they were really calm. They were really together, and uh, they kept it clean. So it was... Um, it was... Uh, it's just... It was crazy. Mm -hmm. So was there a time, I mean, I've read a couple of articles that were written that, um, that you and your dad were actually pretty concerned about whether or not you were going to be able to keep the doors open. I mean, was there a time when you thought, I, I don't know if we can keep doing this? Yeah, there was a time in the beginning where uh, it, was, it was not going good, and, uh, and we were really thinking about just shutting down because uh, the people weren't coming back around, and it, it was scary that we were going to close for, for a second there. Whoa. Um, hmm. So um, I'm curious. You know, this um, the the incident, uh, the shooting has really created different camps of thinking, different views on what happened. Um, did you uh, feel any pressure by any groups to uh, align with a certain philosophy? Yeah, there was the groups that came in. Some groups thought we were. Uh, pro police or pro uh, the community and uh, there was a division for a while but we always try to stay biased we are a business we're not trying to take sites we're just trying to get people to come in and try our food 
<laughs> just trying to stay alive. Yeah. Trying to sell some bakery products. Uh, like yeah, we're just yeah. trying to get people in here. Like, very refreshing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, what's interesting is that, but um, there were a lot of people that came by. So you're saying that people that protested in front of the bakery didn't necessarily come in and, and uh, use your service, use uh, it, buy yeah. your product? But at the beginning, uh, it was just like a piece of bread or two, but they were more focused on, on trying to uh, gather up and put their message across, and mm -hmm. we were the last thing in their mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, this is just me, but since it's out front of your storefront, uh, not to make light of any situation, but had that continued, I don't know, I would have seriously considered, hey, if you're going to be camped out here, you got to come inside and buy something. I mean, good grief. <laughs> You're out front of my store. Patronize it, really. Yeah, that certainly would be would be nice. You know, um, there's still a small memorial out in front of your store, isn't there? Yes. And uh, this uh, weekend, the Tri Cities Community Solutions uh, Community, they're gonna go out there, have a little visual, and clean it up. Clean up the memorial. Yeah. Oh, so there will not yeah, uh, be any uh, uh, any more flowers. We're trying to get like a little plaque to have his name. Just, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, put his memory out there. All right. Um, so, s eight months has gone by, and um, you're still here. Yeah. You're still in business. <laughs> yeah, and, and thanks a lot to like the community, and even the police department came and helped us a lot. A lot. And um, The police department came and helped you? Yeah. They what came did they do? They came in in the beginning, and they, um, they, everybody, most of the uh, police officers out of their pocket, they came and they bought some stuff from us. So that kind of helped us keep on going kept the drive going, we were a little more happy, and uh, they, they helped us out a lot, and they still come around, they, they do a lot of catering orders with us, uh, they buy lunch, they take uh, food to their family, so they've been supporting us. Wow, that's very, very impressive. Hmm. I didn't know that. What other community groups? Uh, the Tri-Cities uh, Solutions Community, they've been there a lot too. Uh, they're the ones that organize most of the, the protest walks and stuff like that, so they've been a, a good help for us too. So they're the protest group. They helped organize that, but now they're going to come and help clean up the front and maybe help put up a plaque, huh? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, you know, I want to take a break right here, but um, I want to come back. I want to talk more about how uh, other groups or people helped you. I know you had a GoFundMe campaign, so I want to learn a little bit about that. What other businesses might learn from your... Um, tragedy basically what you've been through and what uh, the community's been through and then also hey what's on the menu because <laughs> we're coming over later so stick around we'll be right back in a moment in the studio with me right now is uh, Charlie Marin he and his dad Vinny own Vinny's Bakery and Cafe it's pretty well known now here in the Tri-Cities you may not have walked inside but you've probably seen it in the video uh, right in front of their bakery is where Antonio Zambrano Montes uh, was shot and killed by Pasco police. Um, and that happened February 10th. Uh, as as uh, Charlie's been telling us, um, there were some real concerns over this period of time about them staying in business, but here we are eight months after um, you opened or eight months after the shooting. You're coming up on, a, on an anniversary here because you opened December 11th. Yeah, yeah. nice. So they're, they're still here. Um, but you were basically forced to close, you say, for three or four days right after the shooting. Why was that? Uh, the police were still investigating, and uh, they were sitting down with the Antonio's family. So they were using our place as, as a base. So, yeah, we closed down just for the safety of us, too. The police were telling us just in case anything bad goes on, we'd rather have you guys not here than have you guys here getting injured. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I'm curious. Um, you have been through something that few businesses do, and I'm sure that they are very happy with that. When something really unusual happens around their business, what have you learned about this? What, what, what could you tell other people? Patience. Patience? That's, yeah. Wow, don't, that's hard. Yeah, don't ever give up on your dream. Uh, no matter what happens, there's always... Uh, there's always a way to uh, solve things. And uh, we just stayed there and uh, kept on going. We knew our product was good enough to keep on selling. And here we are eight months later, and, and we're still here with just a lot of patience.
patience, and you didn't want to step on anybody's toes, I'm That's hearing it. from you. Yeah, um, try to stay biased on, on your decisions, especially with something like this. You don't want to take a side, and the other side's not going to want to come in or won't even want to see you. <laughs> so you want to, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stay in the middle or just do your business. Mm -hmm. Try to keep away from, from like, uh, the big drama and stuff like that. Yeah. So as I see kind of a division of labor in your little bakery here, I see you kind of emerging as the spokesperson and your father is in the bakery slugging it away every day and making all those great products, as I'm sure you do too. But um, what have you experienced? So you've talked to media, you've been in newspapers, you've been on television. I'm curious, how did you find that experience? And be honest with me here now. It, Don't it, worry about hurting my feelings. All right. It's something <laughs> It's something new, something different. I've never done it. i always seen people getting interviewed on TV or for the newspaper, and I always wondered what it was like. Yeah. <laughs> and now I really know. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a trade out there that's um, it's up, uh, not up and down, but they like putting a little juice on their story. So it was... Uh, it was a, a different experience. I got to learn. Now I know what to say, not to say, and uh, how to keep my <laughs> opinions uh, good and even through the through all. Well, that's interesting. So you, you know, maybe through the chamber, you should give a little presentation. I think to some businesses about how to handle these difficult situations because that is interesting. You've learned what to say that your words will not be construed or extra um, meaning given to them. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I like that. Hey, if you want to ask uh, Charlie a question or make a comment, don't hesitate to give us a call. Our phone number is 547-8726. All right, so, um, you know, I don't know if people have told you this, but I'm sure they have. I think some people would check out your business, but they are um, mistaken in that they are still somehow afraid. I'm not sure what they would be afraid of, but is there anything to be afraid of in coming over to your business? Actually, the, the only thing you have to be afraid of is our parking. We have this, uh, a little bit of parking, <laughs> but there's a lot more parking in the back. And, uh, but everything's calm. Everybody's uh, being calm about it. The street's back to normal. And uh, there shouldn't be nothing to be afraid of. Come on down and do it. All right. Well, I want to talk a little bit about your uh, menu because when I was there the other day chatting with you and uh, you sent me on my way with the menu, I did look at it and I was like really impressed with it. So I want to hear a little bit about it. And then the other thing about it, Charlie, that I find kind of interesting is that, you know, you're Mexican. Yes. And most people who are involved in food who are Mexican have Mexican food. Yeah. But you don't. You have a really interesting blend of food. So tell me, how did you come up with this menu? Why are you doing this? Uh, when I came up from Los Angeles, uh, I used to work at a bakery where we did similar sandwiches. Mm -hmm. And I came up here uh, looking for uh, my Cuban sandwich and there was nowhere to be found. Albertsons has something similar, but it's not the same. So uh, we decided to come here and try it, try it out in the city. And uh, yeah, our food is very diverse. We like, uh, we're, we're not trying to be Mexican, authentic Mexican. We're trying to be, try to give something, a little bit something for everybody, everybody's palate. Yeah, so I see that you have sandwiches, you have salads, uh, you have breakfast food, and then of course all of the bakery stuff on top of that. Yeah. What, what do you do in the bakery? What kind of food? There's, uh, we have like donuts, uh, we have, uh, right now our pecan tarts are top selling and we'll have full size for Thanksgiving. Ah, uh, okay. Our, our donuts are a little bit bigger than normal, so a lot of people are liking that. We have the traditional Mexican bread as well. And uh, we're actually trying to get back into like uh, danishes and uh, scones, muffins, cinnamon rolls. That chocolate cake, I'm, I'm looking at yes, the menu. Yes, yes, he's looking. That chocolate cake, <laughs> anything with chocolate like that, I'm so there. Give me a fork, I'm diving in. Yeah, a chocolate ganache cake is one of the good sellers. <laughs> well, uh, tell me about this uh, potato thing that is on the menu that's kind of interesting and very different. What is that thing? All right, so it's our paparayana potato pot, which is uh, a mashed potato with uh, stuffed with ground beef, breaded mm -hmm. and fried. Really good. It's an authentic little Cuban snack. 
<laughs> oh, doesn't that sound delicious? Okay, well, I'm, I'm probably going to get the Cuban sandwich, so why don't you tell people what it is, and I'll be listening at the same time. What is it? All right, our Cuban sandwich is our slow roasted pork with ham, pickles, mayo, mustard, Swiss cheese. It's uh, grilled, then pressed, and it's done. Really good sandwich. Mm, okay, all right. You convinced me. So, um, uh, folks, if you want to join us, I've got a few friends that are coming with me. We're going to meet over there at 1.30 today and have a late lunch. So, uh, if you can't join us today at 1.30, I really encourage you to check out their business. They're, uh, I think, more than worthy of support in our community and the way that your family has handled this um, is really admirable. Thank you. So, Please tell your father, thank you. And right. I'm glad you're here in the Tri-Cities. Thank you We'll very check much. it out. All right, Charlie. All right. From Vinny's Bakery in Pasco on Lewis Street.